Hey, hi. Welcome to the part nine of this playlist. Okay, here we are covering solution architect professional real certification questions. Today we will look at questions linked with these three topics, namely cloud formation, Lambda, and AMI. Before we get into the action, please hit the subscribe and the like button. Like I always explain, what are the prereqs? Some people say clear the cloud practitioner certification. Some people say clear the architect associate certification. My take is out of those two, clear at least one so that you know how the certification exams are conducted. All of the content on Cloud Guru channel is designed such that layman's can understand. If you are a layman working in IT, what I mean by layman is you have to be from an IT industry. You have to understand computers, compute, RAM, storage, and so on. But if you are in an IT industry, you can clear cut. You can start with this certification as well. This is one of the complex certifications, professional certifications. Professional certifications are a lot complex than associate certifications. But if you focus on the concepts that I am explaining, you would be successful. Let's jump into the questions. The first one for this part, what it says is, how can you say that your cloud formation template is operationally sound? What the hell is cloud formation? See, this is a service in AWS. Why it has been created? Do you know Terraform? There is a service called Terraform. What it does is, suppose you have five servers in your on-premises and you want to you know, recreate that. Same configurations you want to use and create the user acceptance test box. If you want to do that, what will you do in today's world? You will get the hardware, you will do the installation, you will install the operating system, suppose Red Hat, you will do the configuration, you will take different sort of softwares, you will open the ports and blah, 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 blah. And eventually you will make mistakes. There will be certain, certain configurations which you would skip or make mistakes because you know why? Because you are a human being. You are a human being. What is the characteristics of human being? You make mistakes. So do not worry. I know you all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. I know human beings are stupid to some extent, but you have AWS cloud formation. What it does is it will create the infrastructure as a code. So what happens is you create one infrastructure, you do manual setup, and then you create a code out of it and you replicate the same code in UAT, in system integration test boxes or whichever box you want to configure to it. If you have a production setup and if you want to tear up the production boxes in AWS and recreate from scratch, you can do it in hours. You don't, you know, you don't have to rely on your those folks, those, those hardware folks, configuration folks who used to tell you that, you know what, this is rocket science. No, this is not rocket science. You just execute the code and it will be done automatically. Terraform are the first movers in this space. So basically cloud formation is infrastructure as a code. You run the code and the infrastructure gets created. Wow, what a beauty. You run your code, you run your code, you run your code and infrastructure gets created. The servers get created, the operating system gets installed, their, the configurations happen all automatically. Then you will say, oh, what will my rocket scientists do? You do not suppose you had like 10 rocket scientists. You now need two or three hardware folks so that they can monitor and see if the configurations are correct and etc. Or any, any problem is there or not. So you can lower that team. You can reduce that team. Is it good for humans? No, it is not good for humans. But then you use that human being for some good complex work where brains are required. Creating an infrastructure, no brain is required. Creating an infrastructure, no brain is required. Designing an infrastructure, brains are required. So use your workforce for places where brains are required. Places which are mechanical, like creating the infrastructure, etc. Once you have designed the infrastructure setup and etc., you have laid down the topology, let cloud formation do it. So the question is asking here that you need to ensure that your templates are sound. So what happens in cloud formation is we create template. Now someone might say, hey boss, to jude bol rahe. But see, this is the documentation cloud formation templates. 
always remember you create a template so that you can replicate the same process the process should be repeatable in cloud formation there is a term called repeatability this is an important term see all these sports stars they are high performance people you name virat kohli or our late co and etc they're all high performance people what does that mean they can repeat the entire process they can repeat success they can score centuries repeatably so if like from a probability standpoint if they play 100 games virat kohli may be able to score centuries in like 30 games or at least a good score in at least 60 games that is repeatability in the world always remember in this world you are successful only if you can repeat the performance repeat the success see let's go option by option d says if you want to check the operational validity you need to use formation cloud formation validate template command see this will only check it will make that check if it's a valid json because ultimately you have two options you can either create in json or yaml the code as an infrastructure infrastructure as a code the code the code the code is a json file is a yaml file is a json file or a yaml file this is important okay see this will only check if the template is valid or not it will not tell you if it is operationally sound that means if i run this template will it create two ec2 instances and two rds databases and one redshift database is it operationally sound it will not do it will just tell you your json structure yaml structure is correct or not so D is wrong in this context. C says you need a sandbox or a test area for cloud formation stacks. That means you they are saying that you, you get one sandbox hmm, and you keep running your code there, your infrastructure as a code, you keep running that and see if it is operational, operationally good. Okay. See that is not a mandatory stuff you may do it but what you have to do to check operational validity is you just need to attempt to create a stack okay so when you create a stack stack creation means you are creating those resources so from the management console you can create or cli also you can create it so what you do is you select a template Either you prepare your own template or use a sample template. You select that template and you create a stack out of it. Okay. When you attempt to create the stack, it will automatically check if this your code is operationally sound. So this is the answer. C is not the answer. And now B. It says there is no way to check the operational validity, which is wrong. There is a way. You have to create a stack. Then you can check this. So this is my final answer. Let's jump into this question. See, our corporation is having some data file from click stream it is sending to S3. So this is how it is happening. Now after S3, what happens? Each file is processed and loaded in RDS database. So from S3, all files go to RDS database. It is loaded here. Okay, so the story is clear till this point. And this copy here, this copy is done by Python scripts. And these scripts are running on EC2 instances. So, and what the question is saying is, it takes approximately 15 to 30 minutes to get the 24 hours of data. So what is the pain point? What is the problem statement? This is slow, 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 slow. So what is required? They need performance. They need performance access immediately, immediately. So I have marked the answer, which is answer D. Okay, but let's scan through the options first. A says you increase the size of the instance. Means which instance? You increase the size of EC2 instance. See, like I explained, there is a EC2 instance. The Python job is sitting here. It runs, it takes the data from S3 and it puts it in RDS. But that job, Python, etc. runs on EC2. The first option is saying that you increase the size of this EC2 instance. And then it is saying you run the schedule once an hour. Boss, we want it immediately. You are telling me to run once one hour. Okay, this is crap. This is unacceptable. So A is wrong. B says convert the cron job to a lambda function. So right now they are using this cron job. You convert this to a lambda function and trigger this new function using cron job on an is two answers. See, you use lambda function, cron job, blah, blah, blah. How will it solve your performance issue? Okay. You activate from a cron job or a lambda function. It doesn't matter. The activation doesn't matter. Activation doesn't matter. Okay. This is wrong. Why it doesn't matter? Because there has to be something done to improve the performance. Just using one scheduling tool over the other is not useful. C says, 
convert the cron job to lambda function same as legs and schedule it to run once an hour are boss we want it immediately no so why run once an hour and you will run it schedule it once an hour using cloudwatch events okay crap man cloudwatch is used to monitor to monitor to monitor cloudwatch monitor what you monitor resources rds redshift ec2 s3 see now we have only one option which i already showed you see what it is saying is you create a lambda function okay and it will run when it will run will it run every hour no it will run immediately man immediately when the file is delivered immediately when the file is delivered to s3 using s3 event notifications the moment this file this file comes on s3 lambda will trigger and move the data here immediately so this is my answer this is my answer i hope you got it now someone might say hey you know watch lambda kills itself after 15 minutes okay so this is the documentation also says that so this is a true statement but if the file is coming one file see here what is happening is it is cron job processes 24 hours of data in one go and it takes 15 to 30 minutes the whole 24 hours of data it processes in 15 to 30 minutes if i'm getting a file immediately it will be lot less than 15 minutes so i see no problem with this 15 minutes time out thing there is no problem because hardly one file will take 2 minutes 3 minutes now let's jump to the next question this is a ami question what is ami ami is called amazon machine image in your current corporate if you are working for infosys wipro tcs blah 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 whenever you get a desktop or a laptop a desktop or a laptop what those guys do will they customize everything for you no boss they have a mirror image they just put that image that's the same image but it is in the amazon world so we are calling it amazon machine images so what has happened is one user has developed this image okay he created his custom image he put word powerpoint some operating system like red hat and etc he has developed his image now the user wishes that for the ami to be accessible exclusively to their buddy okay what are buddies for example sachin tendulkar might share this with rahul dravid to your friends okay so how is this managed by the user what should we do there are four options here first one says share the ami with the community and set up approval workflow before anyone launches it see the problem is you want to share it with your friends okay now you will put it in the entire community like in the cricket world you will put it in entire cricketing community so rat virat kohli also comes no see sachin tendulkar wants to share it with rahul dravid now he will put it in the community he will community means he will tell bcci boss take this ami so rat virat kohli venkatesh prasad blah 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 whoever was there or is there they can access it and they can take the approval flow boss no if you just want to share it with your friend why are you putting in the community so that everybody can see it wrong b says it is not possible to share ami with selected user so amazon is mad okay they created a functionality called machine image and that you cannot share with users okay what the hell why the hell did they create it this is wrong man this is common sense wrong common sense wrong it's like you can earn money but you cannot share it with your relatives now never happens man you can share it with anybody you want c says c says you share the ami with friends aws account id which is correct your friend has an aws account rahul dravid has one aws account id sachin nilkar has one he will directly share it with that account id why will he share it with the community etc now fourth says share your ami with friends aws login id no man not with the aws login id you have to share it with the account id login id is it use they are using to login into aws and do some work okay then you why will you share with that somebody uses root user to login which is not i mean you should not use a root user you should create a user but we don't do it at the login id level this is the final answer sachin tendulkar shares directly with rahul dravid's account final answer see it is just like if you want to send 100 dollars okay to your friend's account so will you, will you uh, keep that 100 dollars in a publicly accessible kitty no you will directly send to the account number of your friend will you send it to the internet username password of your friend see d is like that it is internet user id of your friend you don't send it there no you send it to the account account please 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 subscribe to my channel 
hit the like button for previous questions please refer parts 1 to 8 of this playlist remember remember we have to focus on the concepts let us quickly summarize what we covered this question see you guys in the next part